Hello everyone. Guess what? Today we will be engraving acrylic using the Cricut Maker. And I know the number one question I'm going to get before we even get through this tutorial is, can this process be done using the Cricut Explore Air series, either the Cricut Explore Air 2 or the Cricut Explore Air 3? The short answer is yes. The longer answer is it is best if your Cricut Explore Air 2 or 3 is already out of warranty because you will need to use a third party tool that will automatically void your warranty. So I do already have a tutorial that I've done a while back where I used the Cricut Explore Air 2 to do engraving. I will make sure to leave that video linked below this video. However, in today's tutorial, we will be focused on using the original Cricut Maker. Hello everyone and welcome to Cricuting with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda, and thank you so much for joining me today. As I've already stated, we will be focused on engraving on, ac with, on acrylic using the Cricut Maker. Now, in order to go through this process in the way that I've done it, there are two additional things you will need to know how to do. You will need to know how to download a font from defont.com and install that font into Cricut Design Space. You will also need to know how to access the character map on your computer. I use a character map that is called Character Map UWP. Now, I did not demonstrate that process for how to download fonts or how to install the Character Map UWP in this tutorial because this tutorial is focused on engraving on acrylic. However, I will leave the links below this video to those tutorials so that you can access them and learn how to do that before you get to this part. Now, at any time during this video, if you're finding it helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Now, without further ado, let's look at the materials that you will need in order to follow this exact same process. All of the materials will be linked below this video, and then we will head right into Cricut Design Space. At the end, I'll come back, I'll show you how I get it cleaned up, and then I will give you my final thoughts. You ready? Let's get started. The materials I'm going to use for this project include my purple Strong Grip Mat. I'm going to use some masking tape. However, you could also use painter's tape. I'm going to use a lint roller. I'm going to use the number 41 engraving tip. I'm using a light base that I purchased in a four pack from Amazon. And I will use this acrylic heart that is two millimeters in thickness. And I will be connected to my Cricut Maker. Okay, so without further ado, let's head on over to Cricut Design Space. I am in Cricut Design Space and I'm connected to my Cricut Maker. The first thing I suggest you do is upload the engraving fill pattern that is linked directly below this video. However, if you are having a hard time using the pattern or accessing the pattern, you can also find the pattern shared in Cricut Design Space under my profile. If you're wondering what my profile looks like in Cricut Design Space, let me show you. I'm going to click on these three lines. You can see right here it has my name. It has my daughter's name in my picture and there where it says view profile. You can see that I've shared the engraving field pattern multiple times. Okay, so I want to close it out and just in case you have a hard time finding it. You can find it there. It is shared. Okay, so I am going to add the engraving fill pattern to my canvas in Cricut Design Space. Okay, I have it. I'm just gonna move it over here for now. The next thing I'm going to do is turn on the grid lines because I actually want to see where my heart template is and I'm gonna match it up to where what it looks like on the mat. I'm going to grab a shape. Of course, I just indicated that I'm going to use a heart template. 
and I am keeping the heart template right here at the two and two axis and I'm going to stretch it out to match where it um, meets up on the grid lines just so that it looks exactly how it's going to look on the mat. This is perfect. The next thing I'm going to do is change the heart from a basic cut to a pin. The reason why I'm doing that is because I want to make sure that I'm going to have my heart template lined up in the exact right spot. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to go over here back to my left panel. I'm going to select a text box. The text that I'm using is one that is called impact and I did upload this um, font from thefont.com. You can see it's already selected. I'm going to double click here and I'm going to type my name F O R D. My name is in all caps. I am going to move my name over to the top of the engraving fill pattern. I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller to make sure it fits all the way on there and I'll resize it uh, bigger if I need to. I'm going to select my name and the engraving fill pattern at the same time. And if you're looking at my layers panel, you can see that I have two layers selected. I am going to click slice. Remember slice only works when there are two layers selected at one time. Okay. So I'm going to move my name out and you might not be able to tell, but my name is also there two more times. I'm going to move my name back over to this heart and I can tell that my name is a little bit too big for this heart. So I'm going to just uh, resize it a little bit smaller so that it fits kind of in the center. Okay. And I think I, I like the size of this. I think I like the size of that. Okay. So now I am going to select my name and the heart. And I am going to click align and I am going to center it horizontally. Okay. And so now my name is in the center of the heart. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to change this, uh, my name forward from a basic cut to engrave. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is grab a text box and I'm going to type Peter and turn the caps lock off space Delanda. And I am going to bring this down. Let me break, reduce the view on my screen a little bit. I can actually delete this. I don't need this anymore. And I can just move this over. Okay. All right. So now I have our names and I am going to change this uh, font from impact to one that is called Joseph Sophia. So I'm going to click right here. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to just type in Joseph. Joseph Sophia is a font that also came from defont.com. Okay, so now I can see our names. I can bring the view back up to 100% because I, I I'm going to keep it on 100% for this tutorial. Okay, Let me make sure nothing moved here. Okay, this is perfect. All right, so now I have our names and what I'm going to do is I am going to ungroup this. And I am going to select my name and I'm going to move it over with the right arrow key of my keyboard. Just moving it over and out of the way just for a few minutes. Okay, so it's, it's out of the way. Now I'm going to start to ch make changes to Peter's name. So I'm going to double click. I can just click on his name. I'm going to go to my character map, UWP, and I actually, instead of the, using the P that is there, I actually want to use this P right here. I'm going to click copy, and I'm gonna go back to Cricut Design Space. I'm gonna double click on the P that's there, and I am going to click Control V with my keyboard. 
Now, I'm going to move this P over and I'm also going to unlock this P and because I want to make it taller because this P is actually a um, lowercase P, but I wanted it with the glyph. So I'm using this one even though it's a lowercase P. Okay, I like it so far. The next thing I'm going to do is go back to the character map, UWP. I'm going to click on the R that has the heart next to it, and I'm going to click Copy. I'm going to go back to Cricut Design Space. I'm going to double click on the R that's there, and I'm going to click Control V again, and it changed to the heart that I want. Now for my name, the only change I want to make is a change to the letter A. So I'm going to go to the character map, UWP, and the A that I want is this one. I'm going to click copy. I'm going to go back to Cricut Design Space. I'm going to double click on the A that's there and click Control V and then change that A. That's perfect. Now I'm going to select my name and I am going to use the left arrow key to move it all the way back over and I'm going to get it attached to Peter's name with that heart. Okay, so I have that, that's perfect. Now what I'm going to do is select the whole thing, Peter's name and my name. I am going to attach this and I am going to duplicate it. I'm moving one of these out of the way because I only need one. And what I'm going to do with this one is I am going to go up here to choose an offset because I like this, but I want this to be a little bit thicker. So I am going, and this part right here is definitely optional. You do not have to do this part. Of course, you can do this project any way that works best for you. But for me, what I want to do is make this just a tiny bit thicker. And instead of, you know, just duplicate, duplicating and, and attaching it, I'm just going to add a very small offset to it. I want my offset to be 0.03. I'm going to click apply. You can see the offset is small. That is perfect for me. All right. And what I'm going to do with my name and that offset is I'm going to select it all and I'm going to attach it. Okay. And I think it would be okay if I just go ahead and weld it because I want it to stay together. And if I, in case I don't want to keep it like this, of course I have this extra one down here so I don't have to start over. Okay, so I like this now. What I'm going to do now, pay and I need you to really pay attention to this part right here. I'm going to put this on top of the heart and I'm going to resize this so that it fits and it doesn't extend beyond the heart. And I'm going to select my our first names, Peter and my name, and then I'm also going to hold my shift key and I'm going to select the last name, Ford. What I'm going to do here is I am going to click Align and I am going to center this vertically okay now that i have it centered i know that it's perfect the way that it is now i'm going to just click out i'm going to select our net our first names i am going to add another offset to this and you'll see why in a minute i'm going to select offset but instead of the offset being 0.03 i want it to just be a little bit bigger I want it to be 0.04, I'm going to click apply, okay? Once that second offset is applied, I'm going to select that offset, I'm going to hold my shift key, I'm going to select our last name again, and I'm going to slice that. So right here, what I'm doing is slicing the offset, but not our names. 
I only want the offset to be taken out of our last names. So I'm going to take this offset and I'm going to delete that. I'm going to just move our names now for a minute. You might not be able to tell, but there are other pieces in the middle right here. That's I'm going to delete this. There are other pieces. I'm also going to delete this. What I'm going to do now is put our names right back in the middle and just to be on the safe side or to be sure about where our names are, I'm going to select our names and I'm going to hold my shift key and I'm going to select our last name, these two layers right here, and I am going to align them again and I'm going to center it vertically just to make sure, okay? It looks like it is absolutely perfect. Now we're at the home stretch. What I'm going to do here is select my name, our names, Peter and Delanda, and I am going to click engrave, okay? Now our names will be outlined in, in the middle of our last name, and it's going to look absolutely beautiful. I can promise you, you're going to love it. I already do love it. Okay, so now I have it just the way I want it. The next thing I'm going to do is click save and I'm going to call this um, Ford in heart. Ford in a heart. And I'm going to click save. Okay. And with everything else that's on the mat, every like all of this other stuff, I can just turn it off because I don't need any of this to be um, made. I can delete this or I can save it. I'm gonna just turn it off for now. And I think that's everything that I'm going to um, do my engraving on. Okay, let me make sure that I have everything. Okay, the last step. How did I leave out the last step? I left out all of this. What I'm going to do now is click attach so that the heart, my last name, and our first names are all attached. So now I'm ready to click make it. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like. And remember, I said I was going to move the heart template down to the two and two axis because I want it to match exactly where I'm gonna place this on my mat. And because I want mine to be displayed from the back of the heart, I am actually going to mirror this, okay? So this part right here is also optional because you can decide whether you want yours, your engraving to be on the front or on the back. I prefer to have mine on the back. I'm going to click continue. Okay, I'm gonna click browse all materials and everything that is um, showing up should work as an option for engraving. I'm going to choose the tooling leather, six to seven ounces, even though I'm not really using tooling leather i'm going to click done and i am going to make sure to remove the plastic from the heart and i am going to place it exactly where it is on the mat and i'll get it secured to the mat okay everything that i'll do from here will be back on the camera what i'm going to do now is remove the cover from my mat and I am going to get the heart template placed down on the mat in the exact same place that it was on my prepare screen. Now with these templates, there is a plastic cover on both sides. And what I typically do is remove the plastic from one side. I don't remove it from both sides just yet. So I'm going to remove the plastic from this side and I'm going to place this down on the mat at the two and two axis. Making sure to line it up exactly the same way that it was lined up in Cricut Design Space. Okay, so that looks about right to me. It actually looks perfect to me. 
And what I'm going to do now is I am going to secure this down with tape. So I'm just going to grab some tape. And remember, you can use painter's tape. If you don't have masking tape, painter's tape is probably actually better. Um, I don't have any painter's tape. So this masking tape is going to have to work. Okay, so I'm just gonna get some. I'm just gonna tape along the edges of the heart. And I just wanna secure it. And it's okay if, you know, the engraving tool goes over the edge a little bit. So I would definitely say be careful with this part right here. So you don't wanna have any of the tape going off the mat. So I'm just taping it down securely. Tape, tape in here, just to keep it in place. And it doesn't matter how I tape it up here because my design is going to be in the middle. And I think that's good enough. It might not be pretty, but it's good enough. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, and that is not pretty at all. And it doesn't have to be. It just needs to be secured to the mat. All right. So now what I'm going to do is insert this into my Cricut Maker. Okay. Before I insert the mat into the Maker, it's important to note right here that I will need my engraving tip. So I'm going to remove the fine point blade from clamp A. And I am going to grab my engraving tip from my storage case. Okay, so the engraving tip is the one that is labeled as number 41. And I'm going to get it inserted. And now I will insert my mat into the machine and I will press the flashing arrow. I am satisfied with the way this looks now. I am going to remove the mat from the machine and I am going to get this all cleaned up and I'm going to show you what it looks like after it's cleaned up and in the light base. But I am gonna show you my process for getting it cleaned up. So let's move back over to the okay, table. So I still have the acrylic piece on the mat. What I wanna do is just take my lint roller and just go over it to clean it off and remove any debris. You can also do this same thing with the pieces of tape as you remove them. So once I start to remove the tape, some of the tape will also have debris, so that's why I prefer to use a lint roller to do it. But if you don't have a lint roller, you can just use the tape and get it all cleaned up just like that. So I'm just going to get all the tape removed. And hopefully this is making sense to why I mirrored mine, because I like for my design to show through the back but it doesn't matter, it's a matter of personal preference. You could totally do this same thing without mirroring yours. So now that I have to remove up. it from the mat, you can see just how gorgeous that is. Look at that, look at, <laughs> look at how beautiful this is, oh my goodness. Okay, so remember there is still a piece of plastic on this side because I only took the plastic off of the other side so I'm just going to remove it here and then I will get it put in the light base and you see how pretty that is I know you can really see it by looking at it on top of this purple mat you can see our names very very clearly and now let me show you what it looks like in the light base so here's the light base these come in a four pack and you just insert the acrylic piece in there and you can see how the light shines. So there we go. You can see what the 
acrylic looks like in the light base and these light bases do change colors so i don't know if they are on a timer or something like that they also come with a remote so you can um, change the timer with the remote i haven't ever used that feature i kind of just let them go through the full light cycle but hopefully so you found hopefully this helpful. you found this process helpful and if you did please consider liking the video subscribing to my channel and turning on the bell for notifications because i do upload new content every single week thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for watching bye